in their album from 2002, A Rush of Blood to the Head, the alternative rock band Coldplay has a song entitled The Scientist. When my daughter Jordana and I would sing that song together, there was a line that we would always purposefully distort. In the refrain of the song, I would say and we would laughing and lovingly end it, take me back to the stars. And for me, that expression was always very intriguing. What does it mean to go back to the stars? Well, it is something that we used to say, we are starless, but not a lot of people realize that actually it is literally true. The atoms of our bodies are originated in the stars and in very interesting ways, different kinds of stars, and these elements are forged in exploding massive stars, in slowly dying low mass stars, but also white dwarfs merging neutron stars. And some time ago, I created a chart that tries to represent all these various pieces of uh, information, putting together various sources from Arizona State University uh, to Wikipedia pages, especially having been inspired by a post on Facebook from Ashton Martin, I created a chart that I called the Cosmic Origin of the elements in the human body. And there are quite a few elements in, in our bodies. 27 stable elements constitute your body uh, out of the total of 80 stable elements. We know more than 110 elements, but only 80 of them last for a long time Others are radioactive and they decay, ending up being one of uh, the stable elements uh, that we know. And of course, you don't want your body to be radioactive, so you are relying on the stable elements instead to compose it. Oxygen, carbon and hydrogen make up more than 90% of your body mass almost 95%. Now, oxygen and hydrogen, most of the time combine to form water. And uh, as a matter of fact, more than 70% of your body is water. But there are other uh, compounds, especially those uh, together with carbon, uh, which is the element most capable of forming a variety of bonds. And the study of the carbon compounds is called organic chemistry, historically, and a little bit confusingly, not because only biological um, systems have carbon or, or uh, long chains of uh, hydrocarbons, as it, as it turns out, but uh, that is the nomenclature that we ended up with. There are um, a, a, a list of other elements, uh, nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, chlorine, magnesium, sulfur. Uh, these go from 3% to 0.4% of uh, the uh, body mass. And then what we call trace elements, less than 0.1%, boron, cadmium, chromium, iron, manganese, uh, selenium, and so on. So most of the carbon and the nitrogen, which itself is about 3% of the body mass, originate from dying low mass stars. 
similar to the Sun in terms of uh, their total mass, these stars shed their outer layers and transfer them into the interstellar medium as they exhaust uh, their original um, fusion fuel, uh, hydrogen, because of the processes that enabled them to contrast their um, gravity uh, are exhausted. As the sun, they become red giants. Uh, in the case of the sun, in the next three, four billion years, uh, it will grow in size, uh, encompassing um, uh, even uh, the orbit of Mars. We will have to plan ahead and become not only an interplanetary species, as Elon Musk uh, uh, is hoping we can shortly, but we will have to potentially become an interstellar species if we want to avoid being consumed by uh, the sun as it becomes a red giant. The exploding massive stars that become supernovae, where nothing uh, remains uh, except the very core that becomes a neutron star, generate some of the carbon and some of the nitrogen, but most uh, of uh, the phosphorus and calcium and all of the oxygen uh, in our bodies. The exploding white dwarves that create iron, for example, and others, where the iron is what gives with no relation to the color of the star, when it combines with oxygen, the red color in the hemoglobin of your blood. And interestingly, these white dwarves can go uh, in a nova, not a supernova, multiple times as they interact with, with other stars. Many stars uh, uh, in the universe are um, orbiting other stars, and as these interact, taking mass from one another, consuming each other, uh, they can go through, in the case of white dwarves, through multiple stages of, of nova explosion. Boron in our body is born in interstellar space not within stars, when atomic nuclei accelerated by the stellar explosions to a speed close to that of light, the maximum speed possible, hit other atoms, most typically hydrogen or even electrons. These atomic nuclei will explode and this explosion will create, for example, boron in our bodies. Some other elements like iodine are very important even if in just traces, but a little bit worryingly, they are the product of the merger of neutron stars. Well, neutron stars themselves are the result of supernova explosions. So are these mergers of neutron stars frequent enough to spew out the elements that coalesce around the star heating the planet that allowed you to evolve over the course of the past several billion years? Is that event frequent enough during the 13 billion years of the universe to give a chance to more than one planet to harbor the type of biology that is even remotely similar to yours? We don't know, but 
for example, using the um, new types of gravitational telescopes, the um, new type of interferometry that enables us to record and analyze the ripples in space-time, we are now starting to be able to analyze these events, the merger of neutron stars, and as a consequence, map out their frequency, their nature, and come to conclusions around these questions as well. And finally, the hydrogen of your body that is so important as the component of uh, water, as uh, the component of hydrocarbons uh, in your DNA and, and uh, in so many other chemical compounds in your body, is not born in a star. Hydrogen is generated in the birth of the universe itself in the Big Bang. You are a direct descendant of the birth of the universe and your body contains the very elements, the very element, the very atoms that have been created during the birth of the universe. So for me, of course, talking about this and thinking about it and creating the chart that I created is fascinating because of the richness of data. It is really an example of data visualization. What I illustrated in the previous episode of The Context. And I hope you will find this chart of the cosmic origins of the elements of your body interesting and intriguing and maybe you can establish other kinds of considerations around this. Or you can be inspired by this combined chart to create other ones uh, that highlight different pieces of information, different uh, uh, interesting and potentially actionable uh, results uh, uh, about the world and about our body, our um, way of, of looking out in, in the universe. I certainly had a lot of fun both creating it and now explaining it uh, to you. Being able to have such an incredible insight of what the world is made of, what our body is made of, what are the origins of the universe, the nature of stars, to me is incredibly empowering. It really illustrates how far we have come in being able to explain the world. Of course, literally an, un an unlimited number of questions uh, remain to try to find answers to. It is a quest that is never going to end. But we can rejoice, we can be proud, we can find inspiration and exhilaration in the things that we already know, spurring us to further explorations.